Hey everybody and welcome back to our final tennis lesson for lesson six which we're going to be looking at competing like the pros. Now my name is Ashley Neves and I'm here at the Avenue Tennis Club and today we're going to be doing a 30 minute follow along session just like the ones we've done before. Now, just because this is the last week, it doesn't mean that it's the end of your tennis journey. In fact, this is only just the beginning. You can always look back at all of the other lessons and do them again as many times as you like, but even better, you could get yourself to your local tennis club. Now, I know that most of you watching will be from near to the Avenue Tennis Club because we're based here in Haven. And if you are, I'd love to invite you along for a free taster session so that you can have a go on these courts with our coaches as well. So if you'd like to do that, tell your grown-ups and get them to send me an email and we'll invite you along. But if you're not near to here, there'll be plenty of tennis clubs near to you that you can get in touch with. So if you've got any questions about getting involved with tennis, send me a message. So just like all of the other sessions, we're gonna need some equipment to get started. So just like before, I'm gonna give you one minute to go and find it all. The first thing that you need will be a racket or something similar to a racket. It could be your hand or it could be something hard like this where you gotta try and hit the ball like so. You're also going to need a ball. Now the ball can be a tennis ball. It could be this sort of size ball, but as long as you've got something that bounces, it's gonna be good for today. If you don't have something that bounces, you can use socks like before, or you can scrunch up some tissue paper to throw and hit and that sort of thing, that's fine. The final thing that you're going to need is something to draw, something to make, two squares on the floor with. Now I'm lucky, I'm at the tennis club, I've got these throw down lines that I could put down on the floor and draw a square shape with. Now, if you're at school, you might have something like this. You could have cones or something similar to mark out two squares. Or if you're at home, you could just use socks and you could place the socks to make a square. But you need those things to draw a square. Now, to draw two squares, you're probably going to need eight items. So if you've got eight socks or four pairs of socks and that'll be perfect okay and i've also brought my drink along because i get thirsty so i think that would be a good idea too so you've got one minute to get yourself something that looks like a racket something like a ball eight markers and a drink your time starts now off you go Amazing, you've got 10 seconds left to grab all of your bits and pieces. Remember, don't worry if you can't find everything, you'll be able to use your imagination, use your hands, and use things that are around you anyway. Good job. Okay, stop there. So, as always, make sure you check with your grown-ups that you're allowed to use the space that you're in, and you're allowed to use the equipment that you've picked out. We want you to be super safe, so don't be close to any televisions or any windows or lights or that sort of thing, and make sure you've got a nice, clear area. Now, you might have noticed that during your one minute's treasure hunt, I have actually changed courts because I just remembered that last session, I promised you that we'd be on a different surface. So this surface here is artificial grass. As you can see, it looks a little bit like grass, it's green, um, but it doesn't get too slippery when it rains. If I turn you around here, let's have a quick look. We've actually got real grass courts as well, but the, but the grass is busy growing at the moment. The groundsmen are getting it to be nice and green, ready for the grass court season. So once it's ready to go, then we will have 10 grass courts here at the club as well. So what happens is once the grass is ready and they've mowed it so it's really, really short and you can play tennis on it, then the groundsmen actually paint lines on the grass just like we've got here. But these ones are here all year round because it doesn't need to grow. It's pretend grass. So we're on this surface today. How cool is that? Right, first thing we're gonna do is warm up. You don't need your racket and ball. You just need your eight markers. And remember, we're going to draw out two squares in your space. So a square has four sides. So we're gonna put our four markers 
to make a square like this. And then we're going to draw another square right next to it. So they're touching each other like that. There we go. So I'm going to make it nice and tidy. Hopefully you can see my square. So see if you can build your two squares and they should look like this. Let me have a quick look. Brilliant, your squares look great. So you, just like mine, you've got two squares touching each other, ready for our warm up. Now, this little shape that we've made, a bit like last week, is our tiny tennis court. Last week, we only had one square, so we had one part of the court. Today, we have two sides of the court with a net in the middle, you can see here. A bit like the big tennis court that I'm on here. You can see that the net we've got in front of me, you've got your own net here. So when you play tennis, you would play over the net and into the court and your partner would hit over the net and into the court and you'd keep the rally going, which is what we practiced last week. But this week, I'm gonna teach you how to compete. But before we do it, let's get warm. So for our warm up, you're going to start in this square. Now, the first game is going to be side jumps. So when I shout go, you're going to jump over the net and into the other half of the court. Off you go. From side to side, keeping two feet together. Use your arms to jump and just get yourself nice and warm. Make sure you're landing with good balance and good control, bouncing from side to side. Good. Notice I'm bending my knees and I'm using my arms to drive up to get that big jump. See if you can do that as well. How high can you jump? Amazing. Make sure you're nice and balanced. Really good. One more. Okay, should we make a challenge? We like a 30 second challenge, don't we? So I'm gonna start my stopwatch. I'm gonna count 30 seconds and you're gonna see how many times you can jump over the net. Are you ready? Your time starts now. Off we go. One, two. Oh, I've crushed my net already. If you do that like me, you can just fix it. That's fine. Keep your score. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Keep going. 15 seconds gone. Halfway. Five seconds to go. Stop. Amazing score. Well done. So that was the first part of our warm up. I've gone a bit right there, haven't I? That's better. Second part of our warm up, we're going to see if you can do it on one leg. So starting in the first square, you're going to stand on one leg. You're going to use your outside leg. The one that's near the net is going to be in the air. And you're going to see if you can hop and land on your other leg just like this. Then you're gonna do the same on the way back, hop and land in the leg. Have a little practice, off you go. So hopping over the net from side to side. Good. Good, I don't want you to do this one fast because if you do it fast, it's not really hopping, is it? So we want to hold our balance. One, two, three, hop. One, two, three, hop. One, two, three good and that shows that you've got really good balance if you're a bit wobbly don't worry keep practicing and your legs will get stronger and your balance will get better amazing three more to go last one excellent work good okay we've got two more exercises to go now this next exercise, you're going to be doing a lap of the tennis court, a bit like what we did in our very first session, but you're always gonna be facing towards the screen. So it'll look like this. All the way around the court, but your body is always facing towards the screen. Now, if you're really, really good at this, you could do it while looking at the screen as well. That's gonna be tricky because you can't see where your feet are going. But if you touch the court, have a look back down again, and that will help you to get your control and your bearings. Off you go, have a little practice at that one. If I shout change, you're gonna change direction and you're gonna sidestep the other way. 
change. Still facing towards the screen. Change. Change. Good, couple more. Change, change. And rest. Well done, everybody. Final one. You're going to stand in your ready position behind the court on this side. And your job is to see if you can jump into the square and back to your ready position. Then into the other square and then back to your ready position. In, out, in, out, in, out. Have a go. Excellent. Keep practicing. Keeping your balance, keeping your feet together. Use your arms if that helps as well. Amazing. Good, last couple. And stop there. Right, hopefully you're feeling warm. I certainly am. Let's grab a quick drink and then we'll be ready to use the ball and then the racket afterwards. Right, so we're now ready for our body and ball exercises. So grab your ball. We're gonna head back over to our mini tennis court. And the first body and ball exercise that we're gonna do is gonna be very similar to what we did in the last session, but we now have our net. So your job is to see if you can hold the ball with two hands. You're going to throw the ball over the net to get it to land in this court before catching it. Then once you've caught it, you're gonna throw it back over the net so that it bounces in this court before you catch it on this side. So let's have a little practice. We're gonna pop it over the net, just like so. So we're gonna go in this court, in this court, good. Excellent, have a little practice and then we're gonna do a little game where we start counting and understanding if the ball is in or out of the court. Good, keep it up. Eyes on the ball. Get yourself in a nice low ready position when you're doing this. We don't want to throw the ball too far or too high because we want to keep it under control like our rallies last time for when we play matches in a minute. Amazing. Perfect, okay, pause there. So, when you play tennis, the ball goes over the net and it must land in the court or what we've got here, we've got a small square. Now, when you play tennis, if the ball lands outside of the court, we say out because the ball landed outside of the court. If the ball lands in the court, we carry on. So, it will look like this. That's in, so we carry on. In, so we carry on. Out! So we have to start again. So let's go again. It's in the court, that's one. That's two in the court. Three in the court. Out! We got to three. Then it went out, so that one doesn't count. Now, another thing that we need to know, what happens if the ball bounces on the line? Do we think that's in or out? The answer is it's in. So if a ball touches the line, even if it touches the back edge of the line only just, it is in, okay? If it's just outside the line like this, it is out. So if it touches this line, if it touches this line, it is in. Let's see how many we can get. So we're gonna count our scores, you're gonna do the same. Let's see if we can get to five shots in a row. One, two, three, four. Mine was on the line so I can carry on. Five, good, keep going if you're not on five yet. If you drop it, don't worry, you can pick it up and carry on. If you manage to get to five, keep going. See what record you can set yourself. Now remember, the ball has to go over the net. If you throw it into the same square two times in a row, then it didn't go back over the net, so you've got to start again. Brilliant. Okay, let's set ourselves a little time challenge. We've got 30 seconds to see how many rallies we can do over the net that land in the court. Your 30 seconds starts now. Off we go. One, two, three. Good, remember if it touches the line, the line might be your sock. That's fine, if it touches the line, it's in. So we can carry on our score. Good. 
Good stuff, we've got five seconds left. Keep focused on that ball, watching it all the time. Stop! Amazing score. So, without even knowing it, you are now doing a proper rally over the net and inside the lines of a tennis court. And you're starting to understand what is in and what is out, which is gonna really help us when it comes to playing matches, if you get to play on a proper tennis court, which will be amazing. Okay, so next challenge, before we pick up the racket, we're going to see if we can do the same thing, but instead of catching the ball, we're going to tap it up using our palms, a bit like what we did in the last lesson, but it must go over the net. So I would suggest getting really low. If we do tiny taps, it's gonna be easier to control. If we whack it, we're not gonna get very many rallies and it's not gonna help us to win matches. So it'll look a bit like this. So we're gonna bounce it in the square and tap it over the net, tap it over the net, tap it over the net, just like so. Now I've had years of practice of that one and I make it look a bit easier. It's not easy at all, it's very, very tough. If you find that too tricky, you could do one hit over the net and then catch it. And then you could hit it back over the net and then catch it. Back over the net and catch it. But if you want a really tough challenge, you can tap, 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 tap. Off you go. Have a little practice at that one. So we're not gonna be catching the ball after every single bounce. We're gonna to try to tap it back using our hand instead of our racket. Tap, bounce, tap, bounce, tap, bounce. Good, keep it going. I know adults that can't do this one. So if you're managing to get a rally of two or three or four, you are doing so well. Just like always, if you're failing, if it's tough, it doesn't matter. If you practice it, you will get better. So never give up. Good, we're gonna go for another 30 seconds of practicing this one. See what your record rally can be. Can you get past three? If so, can you beat your last record? Good, always got a sidestep to make sure you're behind the ball so we can control it. Excellent stuff. And stop there, well done. Right then, we're gonna grab another quick drink and then it will be time to get our rackets out. Right then, so racket time. If you don't have a racket, you might have your chocolate lid or your book or even your hand again for this one, that's absolutely fine. But we're gonna head back over to our tiny tennis court. So we're now going to start at the back of our court. Remember, this is the back. This is the net in the middle. And if we were playing a real match, we would have somebody on the other side facing us. But because we're so good, we're gonna do this on our own. Now your job is to drop the ball into your court and you're gonna use your racket to see if you can hit the ball into the other court over the net. Okay, so this is the first challenge. We're gonna try to hit it. Oh, it was on the line, so I get a point. Because it was in, remember on the line is in. So I'm on one point, so we're gonna try again. Oh, that was on the line. Two points. Oh, I missed that one, so I'm still on two points. That one wasn't in. I'm gonna go again. So bounce it in your court and hit it into the other court. Yes, three points. Off you go, keep your score. I'm gonna keep going until you get three points. Good. Watching the ball carefully and using your racket strings to control the ball. If you want to hit the ball softer, then we have a smaller swing. If your ball isn't going far enough, you might need a slightly longer swing. That will help the ball to go further. Bounce, tap. Oh, that was out, I didn't get that one. If you're already on three, do a couple more. Nearly there. Oh, I missed that one. And stop there, well done. So, that was your forehand, All right. So, the next level for your forehand, we're going to see if we can hit we're gonna to run to the other side and catch it before it bounces twice. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. We're gonna bounce and tap, one bounce and catch. Okay, then we're gonna try it the other way. So still using my forehand, my favorite side. Bounce and hit, run and catch. Bounce and hit, run and catch. It's always got to bounce and hit over the net. Good, off you go. See if you can do that. We'll do a little practice and then we'll do our 30 second challenge to see how many you can get to. So remember, as soon as you've hit the ball with your racket, 
you've got to run to the other side to catch it before it bounces twice. If you hit it really hard, it's going to be really tough to chase down and we'll have a double bounce, which we don't want. Bounce and hit, one bounce, catch. Are we ready for the challenge then? Let's do it. 30 seconds. Let's see if you can get more than four points. That's going to be your target, four points. Are we ready? Steady. Go. One. Catch. That's one point. Two points. Good. Make sure it goes over the net and in the court. If it's on the line, that's okay. Well done. We've got 10 seconds to go. Can we get one more point? Maybe even two more points. Stop. Amazing. Really good. So you'll remember this is a little bit like the rallying session that we did, but now we've got a real scoring system. And we're starting to understand that the ball needs to go over the net and it needs to bounce in the court. In a real tennis match, this would happen against somebody else the first person to make a mistake if they hit it out of the court or into the net or miss it, then a point goes to the other person. But today, because we're on our own, we've got a really good chance to practice our skills so that we're ready for when we have to face an opponent. Okay, next challenge. Same thing, but we're going to be using a backhand this time. Now this one's tricky because we've got to use two hands. So. We're going to drop the ball, and as soon as we drop it, we're going to hold the racket with two hands because we want to hit the ball gently over the net. So ready? Drop, two hands, and catch. Drop, two hands, and catch. I missed the court on that one, so that doesn't count for a point. Two hands for a backhand. Oh, I missed the court again. It's not easy. Soft control. That was on the line. Good. Off you go. Have a little practice. Excellent stuff. So remember, for backhands, we use two hands. Good, see if you can get it in. I find this one tougher than the forehand side personally, so don't worry if you find it tougher too. It's a good chance for you to practice it. Amazing. Good, good, good. Keep watching that tennis ball, tiny, tiny hits. And stop there. Well done, right, let's do the 30 second challenge then. So if you manage to get four points with your forehand, for your backhand, because it's tougher, let's see if you can get two points. If you only manage to get two points with your forehand, let's see if you can score one point with your backhand. And I'll be really impressed if any of you can beat your forehand score this time round. So I'm gonna set the timer for 30 seconds. Your time starts now, off we go. One, catch, two, the sun's come out now, it's nice and sunny. Good, make sure you're hitting with two hands and it's a soft controlled shot over the net and into your court. Oh, mine was out, don't get a point for that one. That was out as well. Three, two, one, stop. Well done, backhands were tricky, right? Did you manage to get anywhere near your last score? Good effort, well done. Right, final task then with our racket before we do our game. This time, we're gonna practice the other shot that we practice, which is the serve. So hopefully you remember last time, the serve is the shot that you hit above your head. Now, there are gonna be two versions of the serve that you could practice today. There's gonna be one version, which is the easier version, and then there's gonna be a tougher version as well. Standing behind your court, again, your mission is to hit it over the net, and into the other court. But the version one is you're gonna hold the ball on the middle of your face, your racket face, to make a big nose, big clown's nose like this, okay? And you're going to see if you can fling the ball into the zone and catch it on the other side. So up and catch. Same again, make a nose on your strings. Up and catch. I missed the court on that one. Up catch this is different because it's above my shoulders instead of below it's overarm instead of underarm now if this version is a bit too easy you can try this version which is rack it back a little bit further pop the ball up and hit it like a high five like you're going to high five somebody so up hit catch yes i managed to do that one up hit catch it's only tiny hits up 
hit catch. So practice the version that you want to do. Ooh, too hard, I've got to go softer. Let's try the fling. Good. Good, right, hopefully you've had enough time to practice that. Shall we have a go at the challenge? So, let's think. Do we think that was easier or tougher than backhands? I think it was similar. What do you think? Which one's your favourite? My favourite was my forehand. I think I get, I get my best scores with my forehand. I think maybe my serve and backhand are similar. You can decide, but I think I'm going to try to get the same score that I got on my backhand, which was two. So, 30 seconds to see how many serves you can get over the net and into the court and chase it to the other side. Your time starts now. Off we go. One. Two. Don't worry if the ball lands outside of the court. You don't have to go back to zero. You can carry on your score. And again. Oh, I missed that one. Keep watching the ball. Make sure you're hitting these with your racket above your shoulder height. Oh, mine went into the net, so that one doesn't count. Stop! Well done. Now, that was really tough. Normally, when we play tennis on a real tennis court, we would throw the ball a lot higher and we would really reach above our head. But because we're playing tiny tennis, we had to do little tiny ones. But as long as you were doing it overarm instead of underarm, then that is a serve for you. So really, really well done. Right, we've got one more drink break before we get into our challenge. Okay, so pop your drink down. For our final challenge, we're gonna head back over to our tiny court with our racket and ball. Now, if you do have family members in the house, siblings um, or grown-ups with you, then you could challenge them to this game. But for the purpose of this, we're doing this on our own. And we're gonna play a match, our right hand, against our left hand. Now normally, it would be this person against this person. But today, we're playing right hand against left hand. And there's two ways that you can do this. You can choose which way. But we're going to play a match first to five points. So, you can do it with your hands, which I'll show you first, or you can do it with your racket, which I'll show you second. Standing like this, you're going to use your right hand to throw the ball over the net and into the court, like our warm up then your left hand is going to throw it back. And we're going to keep going until one of your hands misses the court. That was in. That was in. Oh, no! So, my left hand missed, which means that my right hand is winning. One point for this side, zero points for this side. Then we're going to try again. Over the net. Uh-oh! I hit the net. So, this hand missed, which means a point goes to this hand. So, it's one point for this hand, one point for this hand. We're going to play first to five. Let's do one more point with my hands. Over the net. <gasps> Out. So I missed with this hand, which means another point goes to this side. So it's two points, one point. Okay, first to five, remember. I'll show you what you could do with a racket. This one's very tough. You're going to see if you can hit the ball, and then in midair, you've got to change hands. So you're going to do it like this. Hit, hit, hit. Uh-oh. I missed because I hit the ball into the net with this hand, so a point goes to this hand, which means it's three, one. Let's try again. Right hand, left hand. Ooh, on the line, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, uh-oh. Four, one, match point to this hand. If this hand wins one more point, it's game over. In the net, point to this hand, 4-2. Oh no! My left hand missed, so the final score was 5-2. Well done to my right hand. Now, in a real tennis match, after the match is over, professional tennis players would shake hands with each other or they would tap rackets to say well played. So, we don't have an opponent, so you can just give yourself a high five. Okay, good. So, 
You can see there that my right hand was better than my left hand, but I am right-handed, so that's normal. Have a go yourself. If you're still playing your match, keep going. We're gonna play first to five points. Excellent. It's really tr tricky. You can choose if you want to use your hands or if you want to use your rackets, but you're gonna challenge your left hand versus your right hand. Later on, if you want to get a family member involved, instead of doing left hand against right hand, you could throw the ball over the net and your opponent could throw it back to you and you could keep going until somebody misses. This is how you play a real tennis match. Good stuff. Now, if you're still playing your match, hit pause and carry on. And then when you're finished, hit play again. Okay, so that is the end of your final session. I really hoped you enjoyed these six weeks. And if you really did enjoy them, you can go back to the first session and replay it all over again. And like I said in the previous video and at the start of this video, if you would like to play tennis for real, it could be at our tennis club here at the Avenue, or it could be at another tennis club that's local to you, then it'd be amazing that you do. If you are local to the Avenue, get your parents to give me a message and I will definitely invite you over to the club for a free taster session with me or one of my coaching team here at the Avenue. Well done everybody, it's been really fun having you and I hope to see you all soon. Take care.